Hello, hello everyone. I am Darkness and welcome back to Detroit Become Human. Thank you so much for joining me again. I left it on the main screen, I think, a little bit too long to be able to hear the dialogue she might have had for everyone, but thank you so much for joining again. I'm sorry for the breaks in between the videos. It's been one week since you looked at me. No, it's been, I'm sorry. It's, that's ingrained into my brain. I will never be able to hear it's been and then not think right after, okay. It's been a while, now I'm thinking stained. Okay, my whole life is musical references. It's been a long enough that I have to apologize for the break. Lots of real life stuff happening, but we're back with Hank and Connor. Let's do this. We're investigating a deviant. The good place that, to... Whoa. All right. I need to reconcile with him? Okay. Well, after that police station fiasco where I feel like I got gypped a little bit, yeah, I kind of do. Come on, this is different. It's a hundred percent guaranteed. You can't go wrong. Yeah, you can. All right. So who are we looking at? Pedro, unemployed, criminal record, illegal gambling, fraud. Yeah, I should really trust his. Wait, what's this? Okay. Hi there. Uh, Gary Kays, a business owner, criminal record, uh, resisting a wrench, arrest a wrench, uh, breach of hygiene regula regulations. Oh, business owner. Cool. All right. So we're back in. I'm uh, scanning my surroundings. And yes, the red wall of death cannot go past it because for reasons. That is that is our reason that we cannot go past these two places because reasons the guarantees in this game. No, oh wait, I can s All right, I'm in. I can scan Hank. Whoa. Scanning Hank is very different. No criminal record, but look how clean cut he is. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Born 1985. Screw game set in the future, making me feel like this. All right, we'll we'll, we'll keep going here. Damn straight. Hey, you won't regret this. What is your problem? Don't you ever do as you're told? Look, you don't have to follow me around like a poodle. I apologize. I'm sorry for my behavior back at the police station. I didn't mean to be unpleasant. Oh, wow. You've even got a brown nosing apology program. Guys at Cyberlife thought everything, huh? Well, put a smile on his face at least. Whoa, I picked up that scan real fast. I got his fa Wait, what? XL Soda. Wh why do I need to see that... Uh, pineapple Passion. That sounds good. Um, why do I need to see the food he's eating? Can I see this too? What else is he getting? Hamber Hamburguesa. Um, which is not the same. Um, okay. Good, good to know. They accept Viva and Discover card? Dis Detroit card? Oh my god. I can't believe... Could not believe they would accept those. Oh, thanks, Gary. I'm starting. Don't leave that thing here. Oh, not a chance. Follows me everywhere. <laughs> See? Let's see. He looks so human. Um, the how about the cholesterol? Your meal contains 1.4 times the recommended daily intake of calories and twice the cholesterol level. 
You shouldn't eat that. Everybody's got to die of something. <laughs> he liked that. Um, no, his company, though. He was around people. I don't want to alarm you, Lieutenant. But I think your friends are engaged in illegal activities. Well, everybody does what they have to to get by. As long as they're not hurting anybody, I don't bother them. That's a good thing with him? Okay, that's... Oh, no, I don't have it. Okay. Uh... Is there anything you'd like to know about me? Hell no. Well, yeah. Um, why do they make you look so goofy and give you that weird voice? Cyberlife androids are designed to work harmoniously with humans. Both my appearance and voice were specifically designed to facilitate my integration. Well, they fucked up. <laughs> okay. Can I ask you a personal question, Lieutenant? Why do you hate androids so much? I have my reasons. Oof. Oh boy. Okay. Maybe I should tell you what we know about defense. You read my mind. Proceed. We believe that a mutation occurs in the software of some androids, which can lead to them emulating a human emotion. In English, please. They don't really feel emotions. They just get overwhelmed by irrational instructions, which can lead to unpredictable behavior. Emotions always screw everything up. The androids aren't as different from us as we thought. <laughs> you ever dealt with deviants before? A few months back, a deviant was threatening to jump off the roof with a little girl. I managed to save her. So I guess you've done all your homework, right? Know everything there is to know about me. Uh oh. Yeah. I know you graduated top of your class. You made a name for yourself in several cases and became the youngest lieutenant in Detroit. I also know you've received several disciplinary warnings in recent years and you spend a lot of time in bars. So, what's your conclusion? Not cold. Uh, uh. I think working with an officer with personal issues is an added challenge. But adapting to human unpredictability is one of my features. I just got a report of a suspected deviant. It's a few blocks away. You should go have a look. Wow, it looked like he was winking at him. I'll be in the car if you need me. Whoa. Okay, he wasn't winking. He was getting information, but that went well. So okay, so the so the police station was supposed to go bad no matter what. And that makes me feel a little better. Oh. You ran out of batteries or what? I'm sorry. I was making a report to Cyberlife. Uh. Well, do you plan on staying in the elevator? No. I'm coming. <laughs> Question the suspect. What do we know about this guy? Not much. Just that a neighbor reported that he heard strange noises coming from this floor. Nobody's supposed to be living here, but the neighbor said he saw a man hiding an LED under his cap. Oh, Christ, if we have to... Feathers. Okay. Every time somebody hears a strange noise, we're gonna need more cops. Anybody home? Open up, Detroit police! Stay behind me. Got it. Yeah, I'm not staying behind. I can get killed and come back. You can't. All right, hold on. I'm not letting anything slip up this time with him too, because I'm afraid for Hank. I got enough. Uh, I got enough comments to know that you guys want to hear what I have to think about Hank. That'll come at the end, guys. So. What the fuck is this? 
this! All right, we've got some investigation to do. Let's stay with the Jesus, wall and just get this over with. Stinks. Analyze. All right. Uh, feels a part of this. Okay, cool. Is this like a clue to Jericho? Recycled paper. Recently moved. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not at all. I, I uh, can. Looks like we came for nothing. Our man's gone. Whoa, buddy. We didn't come for nothing. Wait. Pictures. The same pic. The same drawing. That was made by an android. Found something? Yes. I did. I don't know. Looks like a notebook, but it's indecipherable. It's not completely indecipherable, man. The patterns mean something. Don't let go of that. I need some fresh air. That spec doesn't eat. Same patterns on walls. It's almost like a maze, as if how to find. I'm I'm dead set on how to get Connor to Jericho now, so. Uh cares for wild animals. See now that's different. It, that that is hu hu a huge difference. They keep thinking of as irrational behaviors. You heard Connor's assessment of it, irrational behaviors. But this is actually this is a deviant that. RT, probably initials. This is. His initials in his jacket. That's something your mom does when you're in first grade. Okay, Rupert Travis, a forgery. It's a fake idea. The driver's license is fake. Cool. At least we didn't come for nothing. Well, it's... It's banned. No, it's... It's obvious that this is a, um... It's not what they think it is. It's not just an overwhelming about... He's, he, he's spitting off knowledge, but he himself is already going against what he just said. It's not irrational, um... Um, commands being given that drives him to be a deviant. He's g been given a lot of rational commands and it still has, has high hop software instability. So, he's proof that the words he just said are wrong. Alright, change the angle. Oh no, oh come on. RA9, RA9. No, the scribbles meant something. The scribbles in the other place meant something in the other bathroom, and I messed up that. Any idea what it means? The interrogation. RA nine, written two thousand four hundred and seventy-one times. It's the same sign Ortiz's android wrote on the shower wall. Damn it! Why are they obsessed with this sign? That's exactly what I was afraid of. I would have known. Looks like mazes or something. Yeah. Obsessive compulsive writing, a maze. But how to get out, maybe? A maze of how to get out. All right, let's look first. Uh, sample. Real book. Blue blood. I thought I was the last guy in Detroit to keep some. And he just said real books. books you can't. Its LED is in the sink. Not surprised it was an android. No human could live with all these fucking pigeons. All right. Let's do this. Crap, what am I looking for? Okay. Wooden stool. Recently disturbed. Traces of uh, avian fecal matter. Well, yeah, people would have died from the disease by now. Because birds are filthy. Even though I love them, they're filthy. Open marker pen. Uh, still wet. Used recently. Color. Midnight mood. Black. Recon reconstruct. Ortiz's deviant. 
it wasn't a shrine. He was obsessed with... The LED is gone from this one. Ortiz was obsessed with getting out too. How did they both find out? So is RA9 code for Jericho or something? Because it's a maze, as if you have to find something. And we just played someone getting to Jericho. It can't be a coincidence that we're all finding our way toward... I just don't understand RA9. Don't tell me in the comments below. Don't try to spoil that for me. I'm just... I probably screwed it up with uh, Ortiz's Android being able to figure that out. All right. All right. He was here recently. Yeah, that's true. Not no, not Siri. This isn't gonna help me. Yeah, but when he was writing. Wait, he fell first? Wait, am I actually seeing... Oh, this is the first time that I don't have to go back to the beginning to see the end. This is actually how it happened. So the androids... What? That's what I heard outside. So he's writing, he's writing, obsessive writing. Obsessive writing. Here's the knock. Hits the thing. Uh, ran, ran to the living room. That's what I know. So it really does mean we're sitting right. Find the cause of the loud noise. I j well, I just found half of it. Um. Wait. Cause of the loud noise was this coming down. Metal hook recently broken. Yeah, okay. No, I didn't I the first scuffle from the first the first little bit was the bathroom. This was the loud sound. Traces of avian fecal matter, matter no fingerprints. But it, there are that's there's the outline of Gidmart recent uh, traces of galvanized steel. Reconstruct. But I need to look from this direction because he came from the bathroom. Right? Okay, so if he came from the bathroom, suspect ran toward entrance. Whoa. Wait. He accidentally hit it and knocked it off. We heard the loud sound. He heard us. That was the... Okay. More knocking. Where is it that I'm missing? I already checked that closet. Wait, I didn't have the right angle, did I? There was something else I needed to have... There! Oh... God, no. Oh, no. He was, he was drawing in the bathroom, he heard the first knock, panicked, ran toward the door, hearing us come in, or maybe the elevator. We knocked on the door. He realized he couldn't get out. We heard all of that happen. I'm about to have to chase him. Alright. I don't think he's going to go down like Ortiz's um, deviant did, did. That would be... That would be... Honestly, just poor writing at this point. So I'm hoping that's not like he's... We're not... We don't get another deviant in an attic begging please. There's nothing for him to beg about. This nut job was actually feeding these fuckers.
Can I talk to you? 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 That's dramatic music. Don't mess up, don't mess up. Fast but risky, easy but slow. Uh, uh, balanced, balanced, uh. Oh, and direct but crowded. Look out! I did it! I I did it! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Fast but risky. Come on. Come on, I can do this. 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 Come on. Don't mess this up. Don't mess this up. Keep at him, keep at him. Drake by crowd, safe but slow. No, sorry. Look out! Uh, uh. I don't know where I'm going. No! What? Save Hank, of course! Holy crap. Oh, shit! We had it! Fuck! It's my fault. I should have been faster. You'd have caught it if it weren't for me. That's alright. We know what it looks like. We'll find it. Hey, Connor. Nothing. Oh, that's like a Last of Us flashback for me, where he wants to, but he can't. Now I'm intrigued on what it is that he can... How long have I been going? That, that is long enough for, for... Oh, there are only two options. Rupert got... Oh, it was going to come down to this no matter what. Oh no, there's another way for Rupert to get away, and it had nothing to do with, uh, Hank. Oh gosh. But, did you see that? There, that was a giant arrow going up about Hank. <laughs> Hank is a friend. Hank is a friend. Let's see some world stats, and then I'll tell you guys quickly what I what I feel. Um, this okay. World stats on this. Talk to Hank. Ninety four percent. Be frank with Hank. Uh, cholesterol and warn him about his friends. People don't scan the food apparently, but it gives you a prompt right there. Examine the feathers. Okay. 
uh, there are a few people who don't see the reference. Find the diary. Most people found that. Uh, find Rupert. There's oh, there's a possibility of not finding Rupert. Two percent of you guys did not find him. I've got to assume that this is statistical deviation where there are two percent of you who want to find out what happens if you try to do everything but find him. So gaining on Rupert, I gained on him. Gaining on him is one of, is the way that you, Rupert. I have to actually have gained ground on Rupert to have Rupert push Hank off the roof. If if I hadn't done that, it would have been something that I didn't gain and Rupert got away, or I did something else and actually caught up to him before it even comes to that. So there are three endings. It makes sense, but I mean, seventy five percent. Rupert got Rupert got away. Maybe it's just two different ways for him to get away. No, but there are two different ways in that one branch for him to get away. <sighs> the stereotype that Hank is hitting is this downcrest police officer. There's a lot of and there's a lot of it. It's not just so now this is the end of the video. Th quickly because you guys actually asked for it. Um and I I think my mic has been now the now that I'm here the whole time recording. I think it has been as the input has been way too high, which it has. It has. It's great. I'm gonna clip all over the place. So, um, what does it mean at the very end that that we have an issue with um, Hank going and doing what he's going? Okay. Hank actually has become a stereotype in that, especially when we just saw now, he good marks, good whatnot, everything's great, there's a turning point in his life, now he's a drunken cop in a bar. He's still a good cop when he has to be, but there's something tragic in his past. Apparently it has to do with androids. Have no idea what that is. Whatever it is, he's falling into a stereotype of pretty much people who are military or law enforcement who become depressed PTSD or something else along the line while they're in their career. Now, half the time the stereotype happens, you'll see in the media, it's because of the career itself, ruining relationships or whatnot. Or the other half of the time, it's something during their career in the course of it that kind of just wrecked them and their psyche. They were exemplary, as we see with Hank, but now somehow have gone down the tubes and whatnot. I do not want anything other than to be friends with Hank. Because we saw in the beginning that there was a protest that we had to deal with Mar uh, Marcus. When Marcus was being pushed around, they made a specific point for a protester to come out and say, let's see what, uh, how they like it when they take, you take your job. And the police officer just kind of stared at him and made me think, maybe the police officer's already an android. But point stands that there is there's an issue. There's a real issue with uh, Hank being in the position he's in, with being with playing into that stereotype and being for, being forced into a situation he does not want to be in. My best guess is already that he tried to tell uh, w when we're dealing with Hank, he tried to re refuse order saying, you know how I don't like these things. You know, so my, my first guess is that he has a bias against because of X reason that led him to be in Y bar. You know what I mean? I don't want to be the thing that pushes him even further. If he is playing into a stereotype, one of two things happen. He finds he's replaceable by an android because of me, because I'm a prototype that can do his job. If it's because his relationships were ruined or whatnot, and it's it, 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 overworking or this, that, and the other, and I can all of a sudden come and replace his job, and he's replaceable. Now he's replaceable because he ruined his relationship, but he could have been with his wife because, look, there's a robot that does his job even better than him or whatnot. Hank is in trouble. Hank's in real trouble. And the second one is kind of a, a different... If there is, in, in the past, a reason for him to have hated androids because of something that they did specifically to him, not necessarily messing up relationships, but definitely messing with his psyche, this is his last shot before I can do something that really completely throws him over the edge. Either way, Hank is in a dangerous position because in all of those stereotypes, go go fact check me on this one. Go see how many people fall into the stereotype of being in this position and either something lifts them up and they go back to their former glory or find something of themselves again, 
or they somehow in the storyline die or commit suicide. Go fact check me. This is this is just straight. That's how it's written. It's almost always written like this. Um, and I, I'm I'm trying to think of uh, examples. I know that they wrote that trope, trope in Dexter. I know they wrote that trope in every single police show ever. Um, I know they wrote that trope into. Um, it's not just a trope. You hear it in the news all the time. We have military and uh, police officers, but mostly military that are homeless because they can't go back to the life they used to have because of the training and the things that they saw while they were performing the duties. We have right here sitting in front of us an absolute, not only trope, but a real factual statistic of what happens when some, when your job and an intense job like this conflicts with normal life. I'm afraid of not having him as a friend because I'm afraid of what happens to Hank. Now, maybe something happening to Hank is the thing that causes Connor to be the instability to be where it needs to be. However, if I just saw correctly, instability went up during that um, and Hank went up as a friend. Amanda is sitting here as neutral and here's what I'm starting to feel now that I'm seeing how it's fluctuating. He's sending in reports. Amanda is a new a new variable that we have to account for. Amanda's variable is him following directions completely. And I wouldn't have had this actually part of the analysis before I played the nest. So, okay, so we're almost finished. So, Amanda's analysis of Connor had everything to do with his performance up to then and he had died. And so all of a sudden Connor is a is a flaw pretty much. He is he, he he's a prototype he's doing his best but he could have done better hank on the other hand is looking for a human being partner oh god i hope he did not lose his partner because of an android no 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 the fur oh crap it can't be enough time okay the first case that we find an android being a deviant the first the first case we find it is going to be now that it's apparently been a few months since that scenario since the prologue where connor got the deviant uh, to release the little girl, but he had to lie to the deviant that held. Which, by the way, I'm wondering if I meant that deviant in the that scrapyard where Marcus was. Um, but I be I'm getting the belief that every time my software instability is going up, my friendship with Hank seems to be going up. And when I do something bad that would get me more stable, Amanda, it like I wasn't stable, so my I went neutral with Amanda instead of being able to go up. I think we're going to find that either I'm friends with Hank because I'm breaking protocol and Amanda's not happy because I'm supposed to be the perfect cop or I'm the perfect cop. I'm stable because that's what I'm doing, what I'm programmed to do. And I don't go deviant, but Hank goes down the tubes and I do not want him to fall into a statistic. I just don't. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I, I think Hank is on a very tight tight rope with w what he's being written into. I think Hank's storyline can turn out to be something good or something very tragic. I think Connor interacting with him, being his new partner, um, makes you beg the question, where is, it, where is his old partner? Because cops usually don't, detectives don't usually just travel as a singular unit. That doesn't happen uh, for good reason. One is incapacitated, all of a sudden, you it's kind of like the interrogation with Connor. Connor's memory loss, if that really they didn't have a backup like I predicted they would have, what what good was he all of a sudden being able to find the information he had? Um, if you want to look at detectives as tools, having just one investigate something means you lost your tool if you if something if it's damaged. If looking at them as human beings, you've got a whole different ballpark of what happens if your partner goes down who calls in the backup who gets their who gets them saved you go as at least a pair of detectives investigating something just in case and especially because two sets of eyes on something is better than one one set of eyes questioning can catch the other set of eyes that you know making eye contact is one of the best ways to be able to actually question people to be able to get answers out of them but another set of eyes to look at the surroundings as you as you ask those questions vital to see the surroundings as the person or suspect or anyone that you're looking at is being involved while you have the chance to be able to see the surroundings that you wouldn't have before because maybe they're protective of where they are there are many 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 
there's a multitude of reasons why they he didn't have a partner. His partner's now Connor. This is vital. This is vital somehow to the storyline. And he is a trope that the trope comes from a very factual statistic of what happens to a lot of our law enforcement who go through traumatic experience or about, what, 70% of our military? So there's a lot of people who go fight and they come home, but they never come home. And there's a lot of people who cross that blue line that they never... They they see things that they can never come back from. So it wrecks lives and it does bad. It it, it can do bad things. You, your safety is at the expense of somebody else possibly running into something that you should never see in your life. And sometimes they don't come back from it. I want Hank to come back. So we are friends. I'm good. I'm happy. I'm going to continue with this in the next one. Sorry for all the clipping and the sound issues, if there are any. I didn't realize my mic got turned up. Um, I hope. Tell me what you think down in the comments about my theory about Hank, but no spoilers while doing it. Remember, we are on The Nest, which, if you're past The Nest, don't tell me what actually happens with any of this. Just go with what I got here. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, only up to this point, and I hope to see you back here for the next part really, really soon. Bye!